Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Just wanted to touch base with you a little bit today and kind of go over your first major essay, which is the visual analysis essay. Um, as this is your first one, I wanted to make sure that we went through the instructions together. And then if you had any questions at all after I do that, um, always feel free to reach out. But it's a new experience for you since it's the first. And so I wanted to make sure that we covered everything in it. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to look at those instructions real quick and um, go through that together. And then you can let me know again, like I said, if you have any questions. So first of all, <clears throat> the assignment itself says that you are to write an essay that analyzes the rhetoric of visual arguments, advertisements, political cartoons, paintings, films, etc. Two things I want to say about that very first sentence. First of all, um, when it's talking about the rhetoric of visual arguments, what it's basically saying is your interpretation of what the message is in that source. So for example, a political cartoon, there's going to be a very clear message in it. It won't be difficult even when you have pulled out those individual details and categorized them as repetitions or strands. Um, it won't be difficult for you to be able to see what that message is. Very clear. And that is very argumentative. But not every subject or every painting is going to have a clear, persuasive message. Um, when it's talking about an argument, it's talking about your interpretation. So um, you are essentially in your analysis explaining that um, message as you as you see it. So argument, I think, is a, a difficult word for this situation, but um, that's what it's referring to. So again, let me know if you need me to clarify that further. The other thing I wanted to say is that the examples that it gives you, um, advertisements, political cartoons, paintings, films, websites, all of those are good. The one thing I would caution you against is film. Um, I think I've had one student in the six years that I've been teaching this or seven years, whatever it is, um, that tried that. And it was very difficult because films are long and extensive, even short films. It's difficult to be able to pull out details and say repetitions and strands and whatnot. It's not impossible for sure, but I don't recommend it. Okay, let's move on. Choose an interesting complex image so that whatever you choose, it needs to be interesting and complex. Um, a painting that is basically one pattern repeated over and over again does not work well. The only thing you're going to see in that is repetition. You're going to be writing a full paper, 900 words, you know, three-ish pages or whatever. Um, and you really can't cover that with um, one point of analysis, repetition. So your goal is going to be to look for as many points of analysis from the method as you can. A painting that has repetition, strands, binaries, and an anomaly or anomalies, or at least three of those. Remember your, your goal is gonna be to have at least three points, three main points in your paper. Okay, so interesting, something that you don't see all the time is, is your goal as well. Your overall goal in this paper is to construct and support a thesis that evaluates the quality of the arguments being made in your visual source. You're, you're going to evaluate the quality. What that means is in looking at what this, uh, what this says to you, the details support that well, clear message. It's not this painting is lovely or well done. Um, it's about whether or not there's a clear message to you with those details. Okay. Um, to do this, your paper should place the visual argument in a social or cultural context for your intended viewers. What does this say um, about the world around us? What does it say about politics or religion or the environment or health? Or it, it, there's a lot of different ways that we see the world around us. So your goal is to be able to connect something that you see in that visual source with your world. What's that reflection that you see? Most importantly, though, make sure that you are going beyond merely explaining the obvious in the imagery by analyzing and interpreting repetition, strands, binaries, and or an anomaly and answering the so what question, why your analysis matters. Don't say this is a picture of a lady sitting by a window. We know. But take it a little bit further. What do, what do you see in that 
woman sitting by the window? Is she wearing clothes that represent something to you? Okay. You're, you're breaking it down and not just explaining what everybody else can see. What is the interpretation based on those details? The purpose of this assignment is to help you practice the basics of analysis in a creative way by exploring images that exhibit complexity and rhetorical purpose. In writing this essay, you will be more aware of the cultural, social, political, et cetera, of visual sources, what those implications are. Requirements, it needs to be in MLA format. Um, you should have had practice with that in 1301. Um, but make sure that that is, is well covered. And you have a student example there. Um, you can always look at various other uh, sources online or resources online to show you. And I'll make sure that I also upload an example for you that's, that's annotated so you can see, make sure you have everything that needs to be covered in that MLA format. And then part of that is the next bullet, um, Times New Roman 12 point font. That's part of um, MLA format. Academic writing style, use third person, avoid contractions, use sentence variety, clear transitions, etc. Using third person means you don't say I or me or we or us or you or your. Those are things that are first and second person. Um, it's interesting and somewhat strange to think about talking about your interpretation without using first person pronouns, but it's, it's essentially saying based on these details, this visual source says this, it's not, I see this, or this is what I believe is happening. It's, this is what is you are expressing what you see as fact, because it's your interpretation. It is fact to you. So it doesn't become a, I believe it's this, or it could be this, or you're, you're basing it on facts and how you see it as fact. Okay. Um, you're making sure to use the method, uh, which we've already talked about in detail and you've read about. And then lastly, it's three to four pages excluding your work cited. So don't count that as part of your word count. It has to be there, but it needs to be three to four pages of written analysis. Um, they have to be typed, average 300 words per page. So the minimum is 300 words. Um, stay as close to that as you possibly can. Obviously you can go over a little bit, under a little bit, but let that be a very strong guide for you. Don't go much below it, okay? Um, and then it talks about the student learning outcomes, which I'm not going to go through with you, but basically this is the goal of this assignment. So feel free to take a look at that if you need more information about that. And then the getting started. These are the instructions. This is what you do as you get ready to write this paper. It says to choose a complex, interesting visual source, which we've already talked about. Use analytical methods. So you're going to start with your notice and focus then use the method to develop points of analysis. So I notice and focus on these details. I've categorized those details into rep repetition strands, binaries and anomalies. And based on those four categories, I'm gonna have my points of analysis, each category being its own point of analysis. Um, and then write body paragraphs first using paragraph strategies and academic writing style. So here's the thing about this. Most of the time when people write papers, they typically start with an introduction. They include their thesis statement, which explains what they're gonna be talking about, their main idea and their points. Um, and then they write those points. For this kind of analysis, and, and the book talks about this some, but for this type of analysis, it's a, it, it's a little bit easier if you start by, okay, I'm going to write about repetition. These are the repetitions that I see in this visual source. These repetitions represent this as it relates to the overall social implications or religious implications or political implications. Then I'm going to write about binary. Um, there are these things that oppose each other. These details represent an opposition that again relates somehow to social implications or religious or political. 
Um, in doing that, you write out your three, at least three points of analysis, and you begin to see how it all kind of comes together. So the, the recommendation by the authors of the book is to make sure you've written out what those points of analysis are, and then you can formulate your introduction and your conclusion, okay? Not required. I'm not going to have you show me exactly how you wrote it and in what order, and it has to be in the order that's recommended. Nope. Not going to do it. You do what's best for you, what works, what works best for your process, but know that that is for analysis, um, a recommended way to do it, to kind of flesh out what your points are and then put it all together. All right. So then it says that you're writing your paragraphs first and then making sure you, there's a, a little document in there that talks about paragraph strategies. So look through that. And then make sure you're using formal academic writing style, only third person pronouns. You're not using contractions. So instead of can't, you say cannot. Um, remember to keep formal academic writing style in the forefront of your mind as you put it all together. And then, then they say to write your opening and overall analytical thesis and then write your conclusion with your overall implications of your analysis, the why it matters. And remember that the why it matters has to do with what we see from the world around us without saying we, because that's first person. Um, this particular visual source is a representation of this part of the world, of what we see, okay? So that's the why it matters. Um, and then revise, revise, revise. And then the evaluation criteria, there is a rubric that's included in this module. Um, these are the categories that mainly I focus on, your thesis statement, critical thinking and analysis, development supporting evidence. So you actually support what your ideas are with evidence from that visual. Synthesis, structure, coherence, grammar mechanics, and MLA documentation. Not all of these elements are weighted the same, um, but all of them are going to be part of my holistic view of your paper. Um, the, the grammar and mechanics, a lot of people get a little panicked about that because they think, oh, I, I sometimes mess up with my comma usage or whatever. That you don't have to be a grammarian. You don't have to be perfect in that area. If your grammar mechanics are such that it takes away from the overall understanding of the reading of your paper, that's a problem and needs to be dealt with. And at that point would hurt your grade. But if you, um, if you can put your thoughts together in a way that has limited um, issues that's easy to understand, then you're going to be fine. Make sure you proofread it and make sure you have other people read it for you to make sure that they pinpoint anything you may have missed. But don't stress about that if that's a, a major concern for you. And then, of course, MLA documentation. And then I put down here, the most important aspect of any paper in this class is critical thinking. So for me, it's very important to see that you can break down these sources into the details and categorize them so that I can see you're thinking critically. It's not just, well, this is a picture of a mountain. So it's probably about seeing things from a distance. Go a little deeper than that, okay? Um, note that it says the paper will not be graded without the work cited as the last page of the essay. There is a work cited. You have one source that you are using for this paper, and that needs to be put in MLA format on a work cited page. There are no other um, sources included. You do not look up what other people think of this painting. None of that matters. You are looking at the details of that particular source and figuring out based on those details what you see. So there should be no other sources included or um, as far as written in the paper or as a part of your research. There's no research. You're looking at the source and going from there. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of look at for you and bring to your attention as you start to put together the paper is the student example. And it's right here in the middle of the module. And if you open it up, it says single source because it's one that we started, um, the new procedure we started last year with the single source. So you can see that it is in MLA format. 
um, there is everything is double spaced. So even from the heading to the title and the title to the body of the paper, to completely double spaced. There are no extra spaces there. Okay, all the way through the paper, double spaced. You don't see in-text citations. There, are, there's no need for an in-text citation because this is based on your particular view of that source. Okay, all the way through, <clears throat> and I encourage you to read through it, especially if you're not really sure how to put the whole thing together. It's a good example. And then when you get to the works cited, this is what you see. This is a properly formatted works cited page with works cited at the top. And then this is the source that she used, um, which was the cover of a New Yorker magazine. Um, New Yorker magazine covers, by the way, there's hundreds of them and they are if you're struggling with coming up with something, look through those. There's a ton of them and they have a lot of hidden meaning. So take a look at them anyway. And then you will, as you see here in the example, attach the image at the very bottom after the work cited so that it's available for whoever's looking at your paper to view it in your peer review and also so that I can see it and understand a little bit about your process when you're doing your critical thinking and analysis. Okay, so hopefully that provides a little bit more information for you on how to put the paper together, um, what it should look like. The one last thing I wanted to touch on and didn't um, is I've had people ask me in the past, well, what am I supposed to be putting in that introduction? Um, what you will probably notice a little bit in the student introduction is there's a, a sort of a general discussion of the image. Um, and what she wrote, imagination takes hold when humans admire the world around them. Artwork, when admired, becomes a puzzle for the eye to piece together one step at a time. Similarly, Springing Back by Ricardo Liniers demonstrates multiple revealing strands surrounding a strange anomaly to represent the binary of opportunity versus remaining stagnant. So it was a general discussion of what that particular image represents. And then she goes into more specifics as she breaks it down in the body paragraphs. So that this, this student example is a great one um, to kind of help you see what all needs to go in there. Take a look at it, read through it, and let me know if you have any questions about that or anything else that you've been working on. Um, that discussion board is due, I believe, tomorrow. Possibly, I should probably have checked that before I said that, but check your due date, make sure you get it in on time. Um, the discussion board is a practice in what you're doing in the larger paper. You are only going to be focusing on one point of analysis. So when you look at that Salvador Dali painting, you look for one, like I may look for a binary and talk about what that opposition represents. There's a really good paragraph example or post example in the post, in the prompt. So take a look at that. Um, the key to remember here is you're only focusing on one point of analysis and you're not doing research on what this painting represents. It's weird. There's a lot going on. Um, Salvador Dali meant something by it when he painted it, but we can't ask him what it is. And it really doesn't matter because you are trying to look at it from your perspective and make your own interpretations. You don't know for sure. Doesn't matter what I see can't say I, um, but these details represent this, okay? Please reach out if you have any questions at all. I hope this um, provides a little bit more clarity on what to start looking for as you put the paper together. Um, make sure you stay on top of your due dates and give me a holler if you have any questions. Thanks guys, have a good day.